In this video we're going to be taking one of the existing models from the Pokemon games and painting it into a realistic version worthy of becoming the next detective. If you want to see how that's done, stick around to see which Pokemon I'll be tackling today. Welcome back Blenderheads! In this video we'll be texturing this Warturtle sculpt in Substance Painter, but first we need to UV unwrap him, so let's start there. If you want to watch the first video where we did the sculpting in Blender, the link will be popping up right about now. There'll also be a link in the description. Now this Warturtle sculpt has a ton of detail and we're going to want a really high resolution texture to capture all of that detail. For that reason we'll be using a UDIM workflow, which just means that we'll be placing our UVs over multiple squares, allowing us to have two, three or theoretically an unlimited number of textures. I'll start with the shell because it's really simple. I created the topology to have a ring going around the centre, so all I need to do is select that ring and mark seams through the Control E menu. I then select all the faces and bring up the UV menu with the shortcut U and select Unwrap. This gives me the shell in two halves, which I'll then rotate and scale to fit into the UV squares properly. Don't forget that you can turn on Display Stretch in the Overlay menu. Blue colours means that the UVs are unwrapped perfectly. The more yellow or red they are, the more stretching there is. There's a small amount of stretching here, but it's very minor and this isn't going to cause us any real issues. The body will be a little more tricky, especially the ears. But with the torso missing, this should be fairly straightforward. The arms have an edge loop going all the way down them, so these are easy to split in half. The feet don't have an edge loop going all the way around, so I slice off the bottom and put a split going down the inner thigh. Inside the mouth is an area that always gets squished, so I separate it by marking a seam just behind the lips. The ears will be the biggest problem here, so for now I just separate them from the head. I'll figure out where to put another seam in a moment. The easiest way to unwrap the head is to put a seam from the forehead all the way down to the base of the neck. For characters with large muzzles, I've also found it's useful to put another split just below the chin all the way down to the front of the neck. And finally, I pick that edge around the back of the ears to help them unwrap properly. I like to group my UV tiles by body sections, so the head will get its own tile. Each arm will get their own tile, as will each leg. Don't forget that you can hide your geometry, which also hides the UVs. Removing UV islands from the viewport can sometimes make it easier to see what you're doing. I have quite a bit of empty space on the first UV tile with the head, so I choose to add the ears and the inside of the mouth into the corners. With my major UV island set up, I create a new texture, making sure to select tiled and 32-bit float since I'll be using these to save the displacement maps. Creating this texture just creates one UV tile, so we still need to go to the Images tab and create the extra UDIM tiles. I'll create an additional five. 
the final tile only has the feet on it, so again there's quite a bit of empty space. I choose to add the teeth, claws and tongue to this tile and fill up all of those empty gaps. Up until now the tail has basically been a placeholder, so I quickly replaced this with better geometry by using a curve and adding a bevel to add thickness. The nice part about using curves is that it automatically creates UVs for you, which can save us a lot of time here. With my UVs now set up, I can bake out the displacement maps. For an in-depth tutorial on baking displacement maps, check out my Everything You Need to Know About Displacement Maps tutorial, which you can see here. In a recent update, Blender added the ability to bake all of your UDIM tiles in one go. Previously, it would only bake the first tile, and that was really painful trying to bake out five or six tiles, let alone if you had 20 or 30. This has been a long-awaited feature, and this process is now so simple anyone should be able to work with UDIMs. Please remember to save out your UDIM textures once you've created them. Blender has a habit of losing these files if you haven't saved them externally, and annoyingly I had to recreate these textures. Twice. To save out your displacement maps, make sure to use a format that supports 32-bit, such as TIFF, Targa or OpenEXR, which is what I'll be using. I also recommend the DWAA as the codec. This option massively reduces the file size, making them only slightly larger than PNGs, which is quite amazing. That said, we are still saving some pretty big files here, so expect it to take a brief moment. With the displacement maps saved out, I can delete the multi-res modifiers. The multi-res holds a lot of data in it, which can massively increase the file size of your Blender files, so it's a good idea to remove them. Just make sure that you save a backup first, as once they've been deleted, you can't get them back. It's always a good idea to test your displacement maps before moving on, so I'll quickly set up some basic materials and plug in the displacement maps to test how it's all looking. Once satisfied, I can export the low poly meshes to prepare them for texturing in substance. I'll also need to quickly go back to the previous save so I can export the high poly meshes for baking. See, I told you that you would need to save that back up.
Over in Substance, I set my texture resolution to 4K and import the low poly model. The first thing that we want to do is bake some extra textures for Substance to use, so I import the high poly model and start baking. War Turtle here ended up being around 42 million polygons, so expect this to take a little while. Now in my case, something broke here during the bake, and I've ended up with this massive chunk missing from War Turtle's belly. This is due to the sculpt details being too far away from the low poly mesh. You can fix this by cranking up the max frontal and rear distances. Just keep in mind that the higher you make these numbers, the further Substance has to search for the meshes, which can take a little bit of extra time. Now, Substance has a bunch of really nice smart materials, which you can use to get yourself started, and the creature skins are some of my favourites for these kind of characters. This blue alien one comes with a few layers to control the colour variation, pores and veins. All of these need to be tweaked slightly for it to work for my model, but they're a wonderful starting point. The next thing that I want to do is add some extra colour variation around the body. So I want some lighter patches around the mouth and the neck, as well as the ears and the undersides of the arms and legs. I also like adding an extra layer with just with some random noise on it and setting it to overlay with a low transparency. Overlay makes it so that the white colours go brighter and the dark colours go darker, which gives some great variation. Substance also has a really nice smart material called Creature Teeth, which also works quite well for claws. I found the plaque setting to be a little bit harsh on this material and it makes things a little too dark and dirty, so I dial these back to give War Turtle a more sparkly white grin. Another great smart material is the creature's tongues, which I've found works beautifully. Again, there's some tweaks to make, mostly to reduce the lighter details, but this material is perfect for an asset that will be largely hidden inside the mouth. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted the shell to look yet, so I started by grabbing a bunch of leather, bone, and even the Creature Teeth smart materials to see how they all looked. Some of these look really, really nice, so I delete the ones that I don't want and I start making masks on the others. On the back of the shell, I use the dark leather. On the front, I use the bone, and to help blend the two, I use the Creature Teeth. A combination of tweaking masks, specularity, and adding some extra dirt, and even some moss gives some really pleasing results.
I eventually plan on doing the final eye textures back in Blender, but these empty eyeball sockets kind of have this unsettling feeling. So I slapped some very basic colors on them just to take away that creepy feeling. I add the same creature tongue material to the interior of Warthall's mouth. Remember you can paint directly on the UVs as well as in the viewport, which makes it a lot easier for getting to these hard to reach places. Substance can generate a thickness map, which is perfect for setting up some details for subsurface scattering. Don't forget that you'll need to add the scatter channel to your material to be able to see it, as well as turning it on in the settings. I add subsurface to both the skin and the shell as bone and cartilage does have a small amount of scattering to it, although obviously not nearly as much as the skin. I'm getting really close to having these textures finished, so I want to start looking for the additional details I can add, such as making a thin layer of algae on the back of the shell. It's these small details that really help tell a story. A small amount of algae suggests that Wartortle spends a lot of time in the water, but since he has a trainer, he'll be cleaner than a wild Pokemon. Lots of algae would suggest an untrained Pokemon, and you can replace algae with barnacles, suggesting Wartortle lives by the sea rather than rivers or lakes. Always think about the small details that you can add to establish a backstory without ever having to actually tell your audience anything. I took inspiration from a number of different sources, but one design that really jumped out to me was Joshua Dunlop's version of Wartortle. His choice of colours with the lighter patterns in the cracks on the skin makes it look like water caustics that appear at the bottom of pools or oceans. I thought this would make for an amazing camouflage and frankly it just looks really cool. So this was something I wanted to include in my design. As we're getting on towards the end of the texturing process, I add a layer of dirt. Again, this is to add some backstory. In the short story that I'm working towards, Wartortle and his trainer have been traveling from town to town, and this is the part of the story that takes place in the wilderness. A few days of camping outside will build up a few crusty areas. To add even more detail into the face, I add a few skin materials into the mix. I'll use these to add subtle details like skin pores and wrinkles into the appropriate areas.
As a final detail, I add this cell texture over the top of the skin to emphasize the caustic pattern I wanted to develop. This is just meant to be a pattern on the skin and not actual caustics, so I make sure it's really subtle.